Right, this is the third video on the Grade 12 chapter Work, Energy and Power. And today in this short video we'll be looking at gravitational potential energy of an object, the kinetic energy of the object, and the total mechanical energy of the object. So let's go straight into gravitational potential energy. Given the symbol EP, let's go and have a look at page 10 of our notes and find the definition. So here it is. Gravitational potential energy is defined as the energy of an object due to its position relative to some reference point. And if we look at this diagram here, figure 1.6, we'll see that the ground is often taken as our reference point. So let's go and look at a really simple example. We've got a box that's lying on the floor and because it's on the reference point, it's on ground level, its potential energy is defined as zero. And we're going to lift that box up to a shelf which is two meters higher and we're going to do that, we're going to lift it at constant speed so that we don't give it any extra kinetic energy as it goes up. So if we're going at constant speed, a bit of revision here about forces acting on an object, moving at constant speed, we've got a lifting force, some kind of applied force to lift the box, and we'd have the gravitational force that's acting in the opposite direction. These two would have equal magnitudes. And we know that a gravitational force is mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So we're lifting the box through a vertical height of 2 meters. And all the time we're doing work on that box by the applied force. And we already know from previous videos that when work is done, energy is transferred. And in this case, we're going to see that the, well, the box is going to now have potential energy up here. Question is how much? So looking at the formula for work done, it would be the, uh, the force in question, the applied force multiplied by the displacement. And because that applied force there is equal to the weight, we're going to use the weight as our the magnitude of our force. And the displacement in this case is going to be the height of the shelf, uh, h. So we've just derived the equation for the gravitational potential energy of that object, a certain height h above ground level. So if we plug the numbers in, the mass is 10 kgs, and the gravitational acceleration is 9.8, and the height above ground is 2 meters, and all of that comes out to be, on the calculator, 196 joules. So, if we were to look for an equation on the data sheet for gravitational potential energy, we would select this one. That's the mass of the object. That's the gravitational acceleration. And on Earth, that's 9,8 and h is the vertical height above the ground. Okay, so let's go on to kinetic energy. Right, we're talking about a different type of mechanical energy, kinetic energy, and if we derive the equation, we're not going to do it here, but if we derive the equation, it would come out as a half times the mass of the object multiplied by its speed squared. So it's really important to realize that this is speed. And if you're given a velocity, you simply take the magnitude of the velocity of the object. Right, so to test that equation out, or to use that equation, we're going to look at checkpoint 5 on page 12 of our notes. So let's go there. And 
there it is we're looking at a truck of a particular mass 4,000 kilograms traveling at 45 kilometers per hour and we want to know a the kinetic energy of that truck and we'll get on to B in a moment so let's go back got a mass the truck's got a mass of 4,000 it's traveling at 45 kilometers per hour but we know we'd recognize that uh, that's the wrong unit to substitute in, into our equation so we need to convert that to meters per second and we know from grade 10 that to convert kilometers per hour to meters per second we simply divide by 3.6 so on the calculator it comes out to be 12.5 meters per second so really important in the exam to convert kilometers per hour to meters per second right so how much kinetic energy does this truck have half times the mass times the speed squared mass of the truck is 4000 the speed is 12.5 and don't forget to square that and that answer comes out to be 312,500 joules so that's how much kinetic energy it possesses traveling at that speed right then part b asks for well it describes a car having a mass of 950 kilograms and if it had the same kinetic energy as the truck then what speed would it need to travel at so we use our formula And we know what kinetic energy the, the car should have. It should have the same kinetic energy as the truck. So we put that value in. That's the kinetic energy the car should have. The mass of the car is 950. And we're trying to find what speed it should travel at. So when we put that into the calculator, and find V squared and then square root our answer we should get an answer of 25.65 meters per second right so a very simple e example of kinetic energy kinetic energy we need to know the mass and the object has to be moving in order to have kinetic energy and we'd substitute its speed in there and not forget to square that speed. Right, let's go on to mechanical energy. Right, so mechanical energy has a definition on page 12 of our notes. So let's go there. There it is. Mechanical energy. And here we need to add the gravitational potential energy that the object has and its kinetic energy. So it's simply the sum of those two energies and we know that energy is a scalar quantity. So we, we're not going to worry about what direction things are moving in. We're simply going to add up the, the potential energy and the kinetic energy at a point. So let's look at this example here. We're talking about a cyclist. This is checkpoint six on page 13 of our notes. Let's just go there quickly. Here he is. We've got a cyclist freewheeling down the hill. He's going to pass point A at some stage. And when he does, he'll be traveling at 10 meters per second. And at that point, he'll be three meters above the ground level. 
Total mass of the cyclist and his bike is 80 kilograms. So here comes the cyclist passing point 8, traveling at 10 meters per second. Total mass is 80 kilograms. And point A is 3 meters above the ground. So what's the total mechanical energy at A? Well, let's go to the equation. The equation for mechanical energy is potential energy plus kinetic energy. Remember, these are scalar quantities, so we're not concerned where something is moving. We're simply concerned about the speed it's moving at. Right, let's go. The mechanical energy at A. It's EP plus EK. And we know EP to be equal to MGH. We know EK to be a half MV squared. Mass is 80 kilograms multiplied by 9.8. And the height here of the bike and the cyclist is three meters above the ground level. That's the potential energy of the cyclist. Now for the kinetic energy, a half of 80 multiplied by his speed, which is 10, and we square that. And if we put that all into the calculator, we should get 6,000 352 joules of mechanical energy as he passes point A. Right, so let's go on to another question. This question is also in your notes. It's on page 15. Let's go there. carefully at what we've been given here. We've got a trolley that's at rest. It's going to be pushed up the slope by a, an apply, applied force. All the way up this distance L, that's the length of the slope, and that's 1.2 meters in length. And the trolley eventually gets to point B, where it's going to have some mechanical energy. Over here it's got nothing because it's at rest and it's at the ground level. The trolley is at the ground level. This is the ground level. And it's got no potential energy. And it's certainly got no kinetic energy because it's not moving. But work is being done by the supplied force here. And eventually it gets to point B where it has mechanical energy. Point B is 0.6 meters above the ground level. Right, let's go to that problem. Right, so the first question is to find out how much mechanical energy it has at A. And we can see that it's at rest and it's therefore not moving, so it has zero kinetic energy. And it's at the ground level, so its potential energy is also zero. So total mechanical energy here at A is zero. Let's go to point B. Point B is right at the top of the ramp. You can see that the trolley is moving at 2 meters per second. And it is a particular height above the ground level. So to calculate the mechanical energy at B, we need to add its potential energy and its kinetic energy. And putting in the formulas. And then the substitutions. The trolley has a mass of 3 kgs. 
acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 and the height above the reference point above the ground level this height here is 0.6 meters to that we need to add the kinetic energy at that point and we need to identify that the speed is 2 meters per second at point B don't forget to square that and if you put all of that into the calculator you should get an answer of 23.64 joules so at A it's got zero mechanical energy but at B it's got 23,64 joules so the, the next question is to explain why why does it suddenly have so much kinetic energy where did this kind of, where does this energy come from and uh, we'll remember from a previous video that in order to to gain some kind of mechanical energy work needs to be done so the work done on that object will be equal to the mechanical energy that it possesses at point B and so we ask well what force is doing the work and there is the applied force that applied force acts from the bottom of the ramp all the way up to point B it's acting on the on the cart all the way to B so it's doing work and it's giving the trolley some kind of some mechanical energy at the top so to answer this question work is done on cart by the applied force F so question D then asks well how much work is done on the cart by F well that's equal to the mechanical energy it has at the top which is 23,64 joules and then the last question asks for ask you to find the magnitude of the force F so if we go back to our diagram we've got this force F that's acting all the way along this distance of 1.2 meters so if we write down the formula for work work done is that force multiplied by the displacement we know how much work was done 23,64 joules of work was done by this force and we know that this force acted over a distance of 1.2 meters so that gives an answer of 19.7 newtons okay so let's just summarize quickly in this video we looked at working out the or considering the gravitational potential energy an object had and that depended on its mass the acceleration due to gravity and the height above the ground kinetic energy an object needed to be moving so its formula was a half mv squared where v was the speed of the object and then to calculate the total mechanical energy of an object we need to add its gravitational potential energy and its kinetic energy and these are both scalars and we can simply add them we're not worried about any direction in which an object is moving